praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. God, you're worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight in us. Reign in us, King Jesus. We exalt the Lord our God. We worship at his footstool. We magnify the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen again. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord God Almighty. Come on and magnify him, give him glory. He is worthy to be praised from the rise of the sun to the going down of the same. His name is worthy to be praised. I'm going to read the scripture in Psalms 91, I mean Psalms 100, Psalms 100, and then we're going to go into a word of prayer. It says, make a joyful noise unto Jehovah, all ye lands, serve Jehovah with gladness, come before his presence with singing, know ye that Jehovah, he is God, it is he that has made us and we are his. We are the people, we are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter to his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks unto him, and bless his name. For Jehovah is good, his loving kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness unto all generations. And that is the American Standard Version of the Scripture. Amen. So the King James, we'll go to King James in just a minute. This thing to work right. Praise the Lord. Pray that everyone had a great, blessed day today. That you're standing firm in the faith of Jesus Christ and you're walking in your victory. In spite of the challenges, in spite of the tests and the trials you had to endure on today, I pray that your strength is being made perfect in the Lord Jesus Christ in your weaknesses and you're trusting in his holy written word. In King James, it reads like this, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. I just read in your hearing Psalms 100 in the American Standard Version and the King James Version. Amen. So tonight we're going to get into our lesson as we go into word of prayer. We're going to continue picking up what we talked about last week about Christ's exhortation to the church. We're going to go a little further about Christ's reward to the church. Because Christ, he rewards the church as well. Amen. When you're walking up right before God, God will reward you. He will elevate you. He will lift you up higher than where you are in him before we start out on the elementary stage and we advance to a higher calling in the presence of God with a greater anointing. And sometimes people cannot understand the anointing on your life and you will be attacked because of the anointing. So 
Let's go into a word of prayer. So gracious God, our Father, I thank you and praise you for this day you have made that we can rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to share your word. I ask, Lord God, that you speak to our hearts by divine revelation. Purify, cleanse us, change us, perfect us. Make us holy in your presence, God, and righteous in your image and likeness. I ask, oh God, that you speak by your spirit tonight, oh God, a rhema word that will, that will challenge, that will provoke us to righteousness, that will elevate us, oh God, and even lift us up in your presence to a higher calling, that we walk worthy of the vocation where would we have been called. And I thank you for your presence, God, in our midst and for the anointing destroys the yoke and, and removes burdens off our shoulders as we trust in you. And ask God that you be glorified and exalted today, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen again. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to pick up tonight. We talked about Christ exhortation to the church on last week when the church is really doing what God wanted to do God doesn't have a problem elevating you he doesn't have a, a problem calling you to be blessed and walk in divine favor he doesn't have a problem with you standing fast in the faith of Jesus Christ but the problem comes in when we find ourselves attacking the anointing we attack the anointing and the way you attack the anointing with your mouth when you speak negatively negatively against God's anointing, you speak against the anointing that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the anointed one that lives in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory that one day we too shall all be able to stand in the presence of the Lord at that beam of seat of Christ when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ and he says either to you, well done my good and faithful servant or depart from me, you work of iniquity. So he exhorts you, he lifts you up, he praises you for being upright before him. The problem comes in when we allow ourselves to tolerate the Jezebel spirit, which we've been talking about for the last seven, eight months, about the Jezebel spirit that creeps into the house of God. If you don't rise up in your God-given authority against the rebellion of the enemy, the seducing spirit of Jezebel, the controlling, manipulated spirit of Jezebel, you are going to cause your own church to be destroyed from inside out. That's a word from God because a lot of people that are in leadership does not recognize the anointing on their lives and on their leaders. And God is trying to teach us to value the anointing in ourselves. Every child of God is anointed. And every child of God has a high calling upon themselves. And God holds you accountable if you does not walk upright before him in that anointing. Not saying you're not going to make mistakes. Not saying you're not going to sin and fall short of God's glory because we're all the human beings. But when you are recognizing the Holy Spirit inside of you and you walk into the divine authority God has given you, you don't mind casting down demonic force that rise against the God in you. We have to learn how to stop fighting flesh with flesh and fight with the Spirit. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the putting down of strongholds. And the word tells us we're going to cast down every imagination and every high thought that is on itself against the knowledge of God. And bring those thoughts into captivity until the obedience of Christ. When you realize when your obedience has been fulfilled, then it says you can avenge disobedience. If your obedience is not connected to the righteousness of God, you're not obedient. Because the righteousness of God, it provokes you to walk in righteousness, which means obedience in a godly character. If you don't walk the right before God in a godly character, in the anointing, then you're going to find yourself living in carnality. Carnality is a child of God who has not risen to their potential, is not walking in the divine calling, they're not walking it right before God wholeheartedly, they're striking the fence. You know what he talks about being lukewarm, that's strength on the fence. Either you're going to be hot or you're going to be cold. It's up to you to determine in yourself whether or not you're going to walk right before God's anointing and walk in the anointing and stand fast in the word of God and speak the word on adulterated gospel. So many people compromise when it comes to preaching the gospel because I don't want to hurt people's feelings. 
That is not God. The Holy Spirit will hurt your feelings because the sword of the Spirit, he says in Hebrews chapter 12, I believe around 11, let me turn there because this is going to be a good word tonight because somebody needs to hear this. The Holy Spirit in you is going to check you when you're out of order with God. It's going to check you. No matter what you try to do to, to get around it, you can't get around the truth. Truth is truth. Lie is a lie. And when you're standing on the truth of God's word, it doesn't matter what people try to do, what they try to say, because you have to stand up for righteousness and declare what God tells you to speak, or the blood is on your hands. Come on, think about it, people of God. We are people of God, and we are required to walk in truth and righteousness. It doesn't matter what it looks like, how it feels, because the word of God is quick and powerful, sharp, any two edged sword. It tells us that the word of God is like a sword. And if you got the sword of the spirit in you, you got to speak, speak what God says. My God, my God. Let me go to this other part. Give me one second, I'll find this scripture because it's really in my spirit tonight. Hallelujah. The sword, the sword of the spirit. Because we got to stop playing church. We got to be real with ourselves and real with God because God is holding you accountable when you don't walk right before him. <clears throat> because it's very important as a child of God to stand fast on the word of truth and not compromise. Hebrews 4.12 Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So the word is going to cut you. No matter where it comes from, you got to be able to receive the word of God and not be offended because of the word of God brings correction in your life. If you don't listen to the word of God, then you're going to find yourself compromising and listening to the lies of the enemy. He said the word of God is quick. That means it's, it's going to come rapidly into your life with correction. Powerful. Enough to destroy the mindset of the enemy and sharpen it into a sword to cut and divide and pierce the soul and the spirit. It separates the flesh and the spirit and the joints and the marrows, the things that connect you to unrighteousness. It's going to be cut and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So what's in your mindset, God says the word of God is going to reveal to you what's not right in your heart. You know when your heart ain't right. Nobody got to tell you when you're out of order with God. You know it yourself. You know when you're not walking right before God. And the Holy Spirit begins to tell you when you're a child of God. If you're truly, truly a child of God, and the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you're going to know his voice. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, stranger when I follow. You know the voice of the Lord when he's talking to you. When you're out of order and you define God's order, God's word, God's, God's divine instructions, you know when you're out of order with God. I know when I'm out of order. I know when God checks my heart. When something ain't right with me, I know it. And God allows to be convicted with the purpose of bringing repentance. But the problem comes in, we want to pacify our sin. We want to pacify the lies of the devil and not give in to the truth of God's word. You cannot call yourself a child of God and not be corrected. I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter. You can be a pastor, be a bishop, be an apostle, be an evangelist, be a teacher. It doesn't matter. You cannot compromise with the word of God. When God checks you, he checks you to correct you. If you got a problem being corrected, something wrong with you. You need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. So we talked about a week ago Christ's exhortation of the church. So we talked about how he allowed the church of Thyatira to repent. But he had a problem with them because they allowed the spirit of Jezebel to enter into the church. A lot of pastors today, bishops, apostles, are tolerating the Jezebel spirit in their church. 
and they're not dealing with the root cause of that spirit. And God says to woe to my shepherds who leads my sheep astray. If you don't get to the place where you hear God's voice correcting you and walk in obedience, you are out of order with God. And you will be judged behind your actions. God is not playing with the church because the shepherds are the ones that God's placed in leadership. Like he talked the seven candlesticks in Revelation about the seven churches. Because he, he knows that if a shepherd leads his people astray, then he has to deal with them according to their actions. You will be judged according to your actions. That's in the word of God. Listen to this. Give ear, O shepherd Israel, that thou leadest Joseph like a flock, that thou dwellest between the cherubim and shine forth. So God is saying here, as a shepherd, he want God to continue to, to lead and guide. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs in it with his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are young. So a sheep cannot take care of themselves. Every person in the body of Christ who are sheep are to hearken to the voice of the shepherd that leads the sheep. But if the shepherd's not right, the sheep not going to follow and be corrected neither. We got to pay attention when God begins to speak because it's, it's, it's it's, it's impossible, it's impossible to live right and not follow God's word. You got to know the voice of God and obey his voice. It's a guarantee. You have to listen. 1 Peter 2.25 says, For we were as sheep going, going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. We got to get to the place we hear the shepherd speaking and obey the voice of the Lord. God is calling for us to get back to the place to realign ourselves back with the spirit of God because he's trying to bring correction in the body of Christ and people kick against the prick. They kick against the prick because when people are not ready to receive truth, they, they fight against truth. They slander the truth. Because they don't want to hear truth and be obedient and follow truth. God says that we have to really pay attention to what we're doing in our own personal lives. If we're not going to walk according to God's word, I guarantee judgment is coming upon you who walk in disobedience. If you don't listen to the voice of God, listen to this. 1 Peter 2.25 Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. God says as a pastor, as a bishop, as an apostle, you have a responsibility to lead God's sheep in truth and righteousness and not compromise. Whether it be a family member, whether it be the stranger in the street, whether it be a neighbor next door to you, it doesn't matter when you're preaching God's truth. Unadulterated gospel many times will offend people, but you got to get to the place where you get above the offense and start teaching the truth anyway to the people conv be convicted and change. Without repentance, there's no salvation. Therefore, Jeremiah 23 and 1 said, Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, Ye have scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you evil, the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 23 and 1. So the job of a pastor, a bishop, an apostle is a high calling and high responsibility to continue to declare the truth of God's word no matter how people become offended. Many times I got offended when people rebuked me that were in leadership because I wasn't ready to receive it. 
But if I know I'm not out of order with God, I continue to receive what they say anyway and decipher what they're saying and hold on to what they're telling me and what God tells me too. I'm not going to defy and go against my leadership. I never do that. But I speak truth. Because if I don't speak the truth, God holds me accountable. So we as the people of God should not be ashamed to speak God's word in truth to bring correction to people when they're out of order. In our lesson tonight, Jezebel. Je Jezebel's spirit is a very strong spirit. And that spirit is not to be tolerated in the body of Christ. We have to learn how to declare God's word in spite of what's going on. So here he says, Christ exhorted Thyatira to repent and exhorted those who had not followed the teachings of Jezebel. You need to pay attention. Who's leading you? Who's teaching you? Who's preaching to you? Because, excuse me, if they're not preaching truth, you have all rights and privileges to not listen to them. But if you know in your heart they're teaching you the right things according to the word of God, Study your Bible. I say it all the time. Study your Bible. Examine what's being taught to you, what's being preached to you, and you'll find it in the scriptures that will validate the teaching if they're abiding by God's truth. Jesus had rebuked the church at Thyatira for allowing Jezebel spirit to enter in. Christ rebukes the church today when we allow a Jezebel spirit to enter in and don't do anything about it. One thing about God, if you read the story of Jesus, Jesus never backed down to a demon. He never backed down to a demon. He, de he decreed who he was, spoke against those unclean spirits, and never let them control him, but he controlled the, the, uh, the opportunity of the moment. He spoke nothing but the word of who he was, the word, and commanded the demons to come out of individuals. We have the same authority to command an unclean spirit to come out of an individual. Many times, this is something God showed me yesterday. I was sitting here praying and pondering, pondering in my spirit the word of God concerning Matthew 25. When he talked about the ten virgins, if I were wise, if I were foolish, that dealt with preparation. Prepare yourself to receive the bridegroom when he comes. A lot of people are not studying the word to know the heart of God for themselves to prepare themselves for the bridegroom. The reason why they're so offensive and defensive when things are said they don't understand, instead of examining the word of God, they get mad at the individual. We need to learn how to grow up and stop being immature. Stop being babes designed to send the back of the word. Grow up and want the meat of the word. The meat of the word will challenge you and provoke you to grow. If you're not ready to grow, you will continue to be immature. There are people been in church 30 and 40 years and still babies. Never mature because they don't have a desire to grow. If you have a desire to grow, the word of God is going to challenge and provoke you to grow. Sometimes you will be rebuked when you're out of order with God. And when you can't receive it, that shows your elementary stage and your mentality. You're still a baby designed to sit book of the word. When you get rebuked, you're like your children. You're not going to let your children run over you in your house. You're not going to let your children tell you what you need to do when you're the parent. No, you rebuke them. You correct them. You chastise them to get them back real line with authority. And God is saying, just like the church of Thyatira, he has rebuked them to get them back to the place of submission to authority. He told these others to hold tightly to what you have until I come. So those who did not compromise, those that did not become easily offended, those who did not bow down under pressure, they were the ones who did not give in to the voice of the enemy. He said, hold tight to what you learned. So he said, maintain what you've learned because it causes growth. 
go a little further. It seems a simple statement. Hold tight to what you have. But we also know how crafty Satan is. It is my full-time job to just hold on. It's your full-time job to just hold on. We talked about this last week. I would surmise that the pressure in Thyatira was tremendous against those trying to hold on. It's a hard thing to maintain a righteous stand against rebellion. It's a, it's a hard task to hold on to the truth of God's word against the spirit of Jezebel when it comes against you. But you can do it. You know why? Because I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. His strength becomes your strength when you're holding on. We talked about Adam and Eve, how they did not hold on. They gave their authority to the enemy. So we're going to go further into Christ's reward tonight. Christ promises a reward to all who overcome what? Jezebel influence. Christ promises a reward to all who overcome the Jezebel influence. Remember we talked about it's mind-binding spirits, it's controlling, it's manipulation, it's seducing, it's rebellion, it's pride, it's haughtiness, it's arrogancy, it's being narcissistic, just being stubborn. All those characteristics of Jezebel. And this is what he's talking about. He who overcomes and keeps my, my work until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. We talked about this last week. If you maintain a righteous stand against the spirit of Jezebel in your life, in the life of others who come against you, there's a promise of reward for you. Because you're not compromised. You're not giving in to the enemy spirit. He shall ruin them with a rod of iron. They shall die, be dashed into pieces like the potter's vessel. As also, as I have also received from my father, I will give him the morning star. There's a great reward for you when you hold fast to the confession of your faith without wavering. When you stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free, you have not compromised, you have not given in to the deducing spirits, you did not give in to the lies of the devil, you didn't allow enemy to control your thought life. You have been given, what do you say? The morning star, the glory of God. It said, for those who overcome, will receive authority over all the nations and they will ruin them with the rod, the iron rod and smash them like clay pots. Psalms 2 verse 9 mentions the same authority that is given to Christ. In Revelation 2 26 he makes it clear he's given that authority to every believer who refuses to succumb to the wiles of Jezebel. You know what he's talking about? Given over to the authority of the seducing spirit who refuses to be subjected to the spirit, to the wiles of Jezebel. He also says he will receive the morning star, which is the light that shines in the midst of the darkness. Morning star is another name for Christ. Revelation 22, 16. He is the foundation of all light and morning light of, of prophecy and prophetic fulfillment. So the morning star is the radiant of God's glory being revealed to bring revelation. It, it also illuminates the prophecies and prophetic fulfillments of the gospel. He assures us that of the light of the day, a fulfillment is approaching. He is our source of hope and fulfilled promises. So if Christ is that morning star that dwells inside of you, 
then you have the radiance of God's glory dwelling in your vessel. You have the God-given image of Jesus Christ inside of you, who's that morning star that radiates, that brightens, that illuminates, that brings the fulfillment of the prophecy, the manifest that you got a revelation and understanding what God is talking about in the last days. We're living in the last days. You're going to see more rebellion rise up in the church. You're going to find a lot of resistance. A regime of resisting folk going to rise up in the churches in the last days. It's in the book. It tells you that men are going to turn from truth and going to begin to turn to seducing spirits. To, and it, the gospel is satisfied the itching ears because they do not want to hold fast to the truth. We're living in a time where many people are going to turn from the faith and stop following Jesus Christ. And God is trying to get us to pay attention, my brother, my sister. Don't let that be you. Note that he gives us a rod of iron if we overcome. A rod of iron is something that can't be easily broken. It's a symbol of authority. You have the authority to rule against every unrighteous spirit that rises up against you and in your church. But you must be humble, must have a repentful heart. You must be submitted to authority. You got to walk in truth and righteousness regardless of your feelings and your emotions. See, people don't like this kind of teaching. They don't like this because it challenges you to grow. If you're not ready to grow, you're going to continue to compromise. You're going to always defy truth and ready to fight the individual who bring truth to you. We got to grow up, people of God. We got to grow up. We got to get to the place, get back in the Word of God. We hear God's voice speaking to us. Precious saints, God is going to give us his iron scepter. To defeat the spirit of Jezebel. Not just death, Jezebel. And her seed. You know why? Because Jezebel produces babies. Of rebellion. She re produces babies. Of wickedness. And those seeds are planted in the house of God. And if you don't check it when it rises up in the house of God. It becomes like a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. A little sin will corrupt the whole body. A one bad apple spoil the whole bunch. You don't see a, a batch of grapes. They look good. They're fresh when you buy them. But give it a few days. You start having a little bad seeds pop up of mold on certain parts of the grapes. Before you know it, it's spreading to other grapes and they're being contaminated. This is somebody's revelation tonight. You don't deal with the contamination when it first begins. The spirit of the enemy will manifest in the whole body to cause it to become decayed. We got to wake up church and stop playing church. Be real with yourself. Pre preach the gospel. Stand fast on the word of God regardless of how people feel. Because you don't preach the truth, God going to judge you when you know what to do right and you don't do it. So I'm mad at the devil. I'm mad at the devil. He's been attacking me for so long. I'm tired of it. And I'm standing against the enemy tonight with the word of God to let you know you're not going to break me down. Because I am God's vessel, I've been given a rod of iron as assistant pastor, and I have the right in our prison authority to preach God's word on a don't you don't you nice? If you don't preach the word, God gonna get you. If you call yourself a leader, you call yourself a minister, you call yourself a deacon, call yourself a pastor, call yourself a prophet, call yourself an apostle, a bishop. You don't preach the word, woe to you. I just read that. God's going to visit the same evil upon you for not being obedient. By giving us his scepter, he empowers us with greater measures of authority to defeat our enemies. 
when you are called to a higher calling, sometimes God elevates me to operate in the apostolic anointing. When you walk in that authority, folk don't understand that authority because they don't study their Bible. But when you walk in the authority, you have to rule with the rod of iron according to the word of God to go against the enemy inside of the heart of individuals. Not the person, the spirit behind the person. See, the problem comes in, we, we try to overcome people in their situations, flesh with flesh. But when you get a discernment by the spirit of God, God reveals to you the heart of the spirit that's operating in the individual. And you got to go against that unclean spirit with the word of God. Not your feelings, not your premeditated ideas and thoughts, not according to your dictates of your flesh, but according to the desiring power of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of God and the power of God to shut down the voice of the enemy. Jesus has already overcome the world. He didn't say part of the world. He didn't say a region of the world, a colony of the world. He has already overcame the world, the entire world, the world system of beliefs, the spiritual forces that are in the world of the enemy. And now he is giving us the same authority. Use your authority. Walk in your authority. But you know where it starts first? With you. You got to take authority over your own mind and your own rebellious spirit. And bring those thoughts captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. One thing about God, he's not going to tolerate sin to continue to pop up in your life. And you say you're a leader. He rebukes you tonight. He rebukes me tonight if we tolerate the Jezebel spirit in our lives. The word dominate means domain. Dominion. You get the word dominion from the domain. Because it's talking about taking authority. The devil desires to take our inheritance, our domain. Like your house is your domain, your, your, your place where you dwell. Your heart is your domain. Your mind is your domain. And the enemy wants to get into your domain to take dominion. Because he wants to rule and control you from walking in your authority. Saints, we must rise up and exercise our authority over the devil. He didn't say a person. He didn't say individuals. He didn't say get in confrontation with people to try to fight them with your words. No. He said we got to take authority over the enemy, the devil. Exercise your authority. When you practice exercising your authority over yourself through the word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, then you'll find yourself begin to elevate in the anointing to be able to overcome the power and dominion and the authority of the enemy that comes against you. Stop fighting flesh with flesh because it's not going to work. It just creates more problems, more confusion. I'm a living witness. I've seen it happen many times in my life. I've been in ministry 40 years and I've seen it happen. Even in myself. Because I was not being submitted. I was not being subjected to Jesus Christ. I was not listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So I took matters in my own hand many times. But when the Holy Spirit checks you, he brings correction in your heart to realign you very well with the Holy Spirit, with the gospel of Jesus Christ, that you would not find yourself walking on eggshells, shallow, stagnant, 
not growing, not maturing. But he does things in our lives to perfect us in God's holiness and righteousness that we can walk upright before God every day. The word says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. If there's no submission, there will not be any resisting. If there is no submission, there will not be any resisting. I don't care how much you say, I'm resisting the devil, resisting the devil. Devil flee in Jesus' name. Devil leave me alone in Jesus' name. But you're not submitting to God. So you're just saying words with no power. It doesn't work that way. When I submit, my mind, my heart, my will, my emotions to the Lord, then I can resist the devil. If I do not submit, give God the authority and full charge and reign over my life to control me and lead and guide me and direct me, there will be no resistance of the enemy when he comes. Because if you don't know how to receive the word of God and a word of correction in your life, you're going to continue to live carnal. Because God has to correct us. Whom he loveth, the word says, he chastens. If God did not love you, oh my God. If he did not love you, he would not correct you. God corrects whom he loves. Whom he loves, he brings back to divine order that you can walk right before him in his truth and righteousness. Come on, people of God. Let's get it together now. Let's get it together. We got to pay attention. We got to know the word of God for ourselves. Because if you don't study the word of God, how are you going to find yourself in the word of God and know what God's talking about? Let's listen to here. So looking unto Jesus. And this is Hebrews 12 and 1. Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Arthur finish of what? Our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know why? Because Jesus submitted to the Father and the Holy Spirit when he did the work of the cross, the redemption was done. He died, buried, and rose again. He ascended back to the place of authority to rule and reign in the heavenly realm. That's why it says, who was the, who was the author and finisher of our faith? He accomplished the work of salvation to bring us faith, to believe in God. And we receive him as the Lord and Savior in our lives. And it was joyful to him to now he set himself down on the throne to reign for eternity. Listen, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against themselves, lest he be weird and faint in your minds. Lest he be weird and faint in your minds. Pay attention to what he's talking about. You gotta consider. The work Christ done for you and not be contradiction. Contradicting the word of God. Sinners contradict. They go against what God has done for us. So unless you become weary and faint in your minds. If I be weary and faint in my mind, that means I'm giving up following Jesus Christ. L listen to this. Ye have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. You didn't resist with blood. He did. He resisted to the point of shedding his blood on the cross against the enemy. He gave himself up to die for you and me. We didn't resist the unto blood. He resisted the power of the enemy under blood. 
So you got to get to the place. Listen to this. Go to verse 7. If ye endure chastening, God dealt dealt, or dealeth with you as with a son. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? So God has to correct you. Verse 6 said, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges. That means to punish every son whom he receiveth. Are you a child of God tonight? A real child of God? If you are, you're going to be chastened. If you are, you're going to be scourged. That means whipped. Punished and whipped. Because he loves you. But it's not to the point of death. God chases and he punishes us to get us back in right standing with himself. To walk upright before him. If you don't allow the Spirit of God to correct you out of order, you are out of order with God. Not man, with God. Because the person you define is God. The man is just the vessel God uses. You may ask him. Matter of fact, we wake up a little bit further. It says, Saints, we must rise up and exercise authority over the devil. The word says to submit to God, resist the devil, he'll flee. From, he'll flee. Rise up and resist so that you may rule and reign. Rise up and resist so that you may rule and reign. Rise up and resist so that you may rule and reign. You hear that? Rise up and resist. Rise up and resist. So you rise up in your God's given authority, resist the devil so you can rule and reign. You may be asking, what am I supposed to be overcoming? Listen to this. The answer is any area in your life you do not have or have not dominated. Any area in your life you have not brought to submission to Jesus Christ is what you need to dominate. Wherever the enemy has dominion in a person's life he or she is enslaved. You're a prisoner to the enemy. Wherever the enemy has dominion, authority, rule, and reign in your life, you become a prisoner to the enemy, a slave to the enemy. If you are a slave to lust and perversion, overcome with purity and love. That's your answer. If you are a slave to lust and perversion, repent. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to cleanse your heart, to restore you, revive you. And overcome with purity and love. That means a pure heart. A poor, a poor, what does it say? What does it say? What does it say? Uh, what should I say here? A pure heart, a broken spirit, a contrite heart, God will not destroy. He would not, he would not despise. A broken spirit, a contrite heart, God will not despise. When you're pure in heart and you're walking in love, it doesn't matter what the enemy try to do to you. You are going to stand fast on the word of truth regardless of how it feels. Because it's about God being glorified in you and not you being glorified in yourself. If you are a slave to lies and dishonesty, dishonesty, then overcome with truth. If you are a slave to lies and dishonesty, then you need to overcome with the truth of God's word. If you are a slave to impure thoughts and motives, overcome with God's ability to renew your mind. You hear that? So no excuse. We are without excuse for not being submitted to Jesus Christ. If you are a slave to any of these things, 
Allow God to purify and cleanse your mind and your heart. These are simple examples of overcoming the enemy through spiritual warfare. Overcoming the enemy with spiritual warfare is renewing your mind, letting go of the lies and dishonesty, deception, the misleading of the, Holy, of the enemy in your life, and yield to the Holy Spirit. The Word of God says, choose life. One of the greatest weapons we have is the ability to make the right choice. That's your God-given authority is to choose, to make choices. Pastor Owen said a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago on our radio program, that God gave us the power, the anointing to make choices, to make the right choices, to walk before God in truth and righteousness, or follow out the lies and deception of the enemy. If we choose life, we're going to live. If you choose life and choose what is right in God's eyes, he gives us the grace and the power to accomplish it. That is so awesome. That's so amazing. When you give into the voice of the Lord and be led by the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what people say about you, what they do to you. It's about you and God. You got to choose life. And you can defeat every death structure the enemy has planned against us. We can defeat the enemy. By choosing life, we can defeat every death structure. Remember I talked about that before? The death structure is a prison place in your mind, a dark place. You can choose to go against that or receive it. Choose today not to tolerate Jezebel, her daughter, any longer. You can choose a day to no longer tolerate Jezebel and Athaliah. We're going to talk about the granddaughter in the next, cha next chapter. Which is Delilah. We know about the Seth and Delilah. Everybody know about that story. They teach that in school. We have to learn to choose to no longer be a victim, but be victors in Christ Jesus. How to pray to overcome Jezebel. The sevenfold patterns of Christ instructs to the church of Thyatira provide divine direction in prayer to overcome Jezebel. First, thank God that he is who he says he is, how he describes himself. Thank him for the good that he notices concerning the situation. Pray a prayer of repentance concerning the areas he rebukes. Thank him for the reward and ask him to strengthen you to overcome the enemy. Below is a simple guideline that follows Christ's prayer directives concerning Jezebel. Keep in mind as you pray, you are dethroning the power of Satan through repentance. Remember, ooh, this is good. That every idol, false belief system, bent attitudes, idolatry must be torn down so that the enemy is dethroned. Since we pray in previous chapters to dethrone the spirits that operate in with the Jezebel false gods, especially Baal, Astaroth, and Athaliah, we have no longer right to remain either. Finally, we will praise the Lord for who he is, and rebuild an altar to him, thus establish his truth. When you pray, remain focused, but please do not become legalistic and stuck in the set form of prayers. You hear that? Don't get stuck in the same old routine prayer. Allow the Holy Spirit to change your prayer language, change your prayer life, change your prayer voice. He does that. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in directing your prayers. So as you get into a place of prayer, be humble. Be submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to even lead you in your prayer life. 
to pray the right prayer. God wants you to pray on behalf of people. Part one of prayer, addressing his divine attributes. Lord Jesus, I want you to pray this with me tonight. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are the Son of God. The one who has eyes like flames of fire and feet of brass. I praise you because your eyes see all things. You're able to see the beginning and the end. You are the Alpha and Omega. Lord, you are able to see my future. And I ask that you guide me through this battle opposing the seducing spirits of Jezebel and Athaliah. I ask for your supernatural impartation of spiritual discernment and ability to see and to go into the battle. Since you see all things hidden, I ask you to reveal what is hidden so I can do warfare with confidence. I'm going to read that again. I ask you to reveal what is hidden so I can do warfare with confidence. I ask you to burn away all iniquity within my life so I can be a pure vessel as I confront the Jezebel influence. I pray that your fire would purge and cleanse all my thoughts, deeds, and motives. I thank you for igniting my faith with the Holy Spirit's fire. I position myself at the feet of Christ, fully submitting my life, my finances, my family. You can name other areas in your heart to the Lord. I repent of my selfish ambitions, self-gratifications, self-justifications, and my desire to please man more than you. I repent also of all idolatry, lust of the flesh, and areas of rebellion. Today I am determined to be a God pleaser, and I pray that your Holy Spirit will lead me into all truth. Part two of prayer, affirming commendations. Though you have said I have the measure of faith and love, I ask you to increase my faith and power, empower me to walk in love, conforming to your image so that I can reflect Jesus Christ, the anointed one on this earth. I desire to continue in my commitment and service to you, Lord. As I continue to run the race, empower me to endure all things that I may challenge my faith so that I can be a testimony to your glory. Part three of prayer, repenting for sins that condemns. I repent of partaking of any form of idolatry, agreeing with the lies of Satan, name, naming the errors in your heart. I ask you, Lord God, to save me from all tribulations, deliver me from all spirits of infirmity, infirmity, death, and any death structure that the enemy attempts to erect around my family, business, or ministry. I rebuke every spirit of apathia that kills the godly, see, seduces, and defiles. I loose the power of the Most High God, the Alpha and Omega, into every situation that concerns me. As the Holy Spirit directs, allow him to take, your, take you through any era of repentance that is necessary. Take time on this section. So whatever areas of your life, as you pray in these prayers, the Holy Spirit reveals to you, allow God to cleanse you from it. Part four, his exhortation. Now, Lord, I ask you to empower me to hold fast to what I have. What I, have. I believe in your divine strength will sustain me and that you give your angels charge over me. The angels will not allow me to stumble or fall. You will continue to watch over me. Part five of prayer, confessing your reward for overcoming Jezebel and Athaliah. I thank you, Lord. I will overcome and receive power to rule over the nations with your scepter of iron. I will crush the enemy in all plans of destruction. I will overcome and overpower every Jezebel assignment 
that comes against me, my family, or my ministry. As you promised, I declare that the enemy's plans are crushed like pottery into tiny pieces. I decree that I am an overcomer and that I am empowered to defeat the enemy. I thank you for Jesus, my morning star, who shines brightly into my future and empowers me with great faith and hope. I decree that my ears hear what the Spirit of the Lord says to me. You hear that? I decree that my ears hear what the Spirit of the Lord says to me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now stand up and give the Lord a mighty shout of victory. Hallelujah. You ought to praise him right now for that. Hallelujah. You ought to glorify him. Because you just made a declaration of shutting down the influence and the power and the mind-binding spirit of the enemy over your life, over your business, over your family, over your finance, over your health, over everything that entails your life. You just shut down by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in conclusion, the example I have given as a prayer strategy against Jezebel can also be used against her seed. Again, do not limit all your prayers to this one form. Most likely, Lord, will expand your understanding and strategy. But God has provided his divine pattern for overcoming Jezebel. As we pray, we must heed his direction. As you pray, you must heed his direction. And the prayer that he has outlined does that. It gives you guidance and gives you instruction. My prayer for you is that now you are more fully equipped to dethrone the powers of darkness attempting to rob you of your future. Isn't this wonderful? How God loves us so much. He doesn't want you to be defenseless or caught off guard or blindsided by the enemy. So the lessons that I've been teaching are guidance from the Holy Spirit to build your spirit of discernment. To teach you how to identify, recognize, and defy the power of the enemy and the lies of the devil and the spirit of Jezebel and cast it down and out of your life. In the life of your family, the life of your business, the life of your ministry, the life of your children. Because you have the authority given to your hands to go against the spirit of Jezebel. But you must do it with the spirit of discernment. Not the spirit of the flesh. For the flesh will always cause confusion, will always cause problems, and create issues. But when you pray in the power and the leadership of the Holy Spirit, he gives you a strategy how to overcome the power of the enemy. Amen. Pray with faith against the threefold cord. Jezebel, Athaliah, Delilah. Pray with discernment. Pray with insight and understanding from the word of God. And pray against the power of the threefold cord of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. Repent of sin. And then rebuild an altar to God. You may ask the question, how do I build an altar? Your altar is built in your heart through surrenderance and submission. When I surrender and submit to the Lord Jesus Christ, I yield, release, and surrender to his authority. I give him the power and the control of my heart, my life, my destiny, and my future. And God takes control. He leads, he guides, and directs my steps again in the way of truth and the way of righteousness. Aggressively agree with his word. Have a strong belief in his word. Take power and authority in the word to believe that word and not compromise that word. Aggressively agree with his word and his promises. You will become transformed into his image. Amen. As you agree with the word of God, allow the word of God 
to break the mind binding your spirit off of your mindset and off your heart and set you free from the inside out that you walk forward in your promises and the destiny God has for you. Don't be intimidated by the enemy. Do not fear, for God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. You walk in your authority. The Lord is commanding you and commissioning you tonight to walk in your God-given authority and not bow down to Baal. Do not bow down to the enemy, but stand fast in the liberty when Christ has made you free. Because remember he says, when Christ died, you died with him and rose again into new life. Now walk in it. So God's commissioned you tonight. Walk in your God-given authority. Walk in the word of God with a purpose that God has created you to be a vessel to bring him glory. Amen. We're going to end right there. Let's pick up next week about the evil powers of, of Delilah. The evil powers of Delilah we're going to talk about next week. Chapter 7. We're almost done with the book. we got chapter 7, then chapter 8. We'll be done with this book. So if you don't have this book, as I mentioned before, get this book, add it to your library. You can get it on Amazon, christianbooks.com, christianbooks.com, like the word Christian, and books.com. And the book only costs about 10, depends on the sale. Sometimes you can get it for like $10, but most of the time it's about 15 But get this book. So you can get this book, add it to your library, and study this book. Read this book. Even have a study guide in this book. Because we got to get to the place we're willing to understand and learn and grow in our purpose. Grow in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow the Holy Spirit to empower you to stand fast in the word of faith. And not be wavering in your faith. Shallow in your faith. God wants to take you deeper into the realm of revelation. He wants to take you deeper in your anointing. To make you more stronger. And more powerful gets the kingdom of darkness that you walk in the kingdom of God and that the kingdom be revealed through you in kingdom authority and kingdom power. Amen. So, Lord, tonight I thank you for this word. Pray, O oh God, have my father put deaf ears. But you continue to correct us, reprove us, chasten us, correct us, God, to live a righteous life before you. Forgive us, God, for our sins we have committed, known and unknown thoughts, known and unknown sins of thought, sins of the mouth, sins of action. Forgive us, God. Let us not have anything in our hearts that defies your authority, God, and comes against your word. But help us to learn how to surrender, yield, and release ourselves into your will. That you will lead God and direct us in the path of righteousness. You said straight is a narrow way that you're looking for, and few find it. He said straight, you said many find their way, the, the, the wayward way. But you said straight and narrow is the way you want it to go. But the broad road leads to destruction. Let us not be one of those who waver off pathway because of the sins of the flesh. But let us walk on the straight and narrow way, what I'm trying to say, God that we can be pleased and sacrificed unto you. And that's, oh God, that you touch the heart of those who need healing tonight, those that need deliverance, those that need to be increasing their faith, those, Father God, who are weak in their faith, oh God, that you strengthen and encourage them, God, tonight. Keep standing on the word of truth. And then, Lord, bless your people tonight. Every individual, God, bless them. What they need to do, God, fix it, Jesus. You can fix any problem, any situation rising in our life. We ask that you fix it, God. That we cast our cares at your feet, God. And we come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and help in a time of need. And I thank you for hearing us, God, and answering us according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Each week we always introduce those to Christ who don't know Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. For the mouth confession is made with the heart man believes unto righteousness. You can receive salvation tonight 
by just accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That if thou confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're one of those tonight who a backslider, who walked away from Christ, and you feel abandoned, feel like you left the faith, tonight God's going to marry to you the backslider. And I will abundantly pardon you. If you don't know Jesus, God said tonight, you just receive him as Lord and Savior. He'll come into your heart and save you tonight. All you got to do is pray this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, known and unknown, and cleanse me from all the righteousness. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just got born again, you just got restored, who was a backslider, and God loves you. And I love you too in the love of the Lord. Continue to pray for one another, encourage one another, lift each other up. Continue to be a blessing to one another the way God bless you to bless somebody else with a kind word, finance, whatever you do, whatever you do. If you want to sow a seed into the ministry, you can sow a seed. The link is on here. I don't beg for money. I just give you the opportunity to give according to the spirit God leads you. And I thank God for giving me the opportunity to teach his, this word for five years. Here's this word for five years online. Now, I thank God because it's been a blessing in my spirit. I'm going on six years of teaching the Word of God come April next year. It'll be six years. But I thank God because when I first was approached to do it, I didn't want to do it. But once I prayed and got out of myself, the Holy Spirit said, do it. Teach the Word. And I've been doing it now faithfully for almost six years even though sometimes I have to take a break, a week or two, but I still get back in there and keep teaching. Never give up on your calling. Never give up on your purpose. Don't let the devil deceive or manipulate and control you out of your purpose. Because that's what he wants to do, make you quit. And God don't have quitters on his side. He got people who are called to divine authority, people who walk right before God with power, who stand fast, submitted to the call. So I, I commission you tonight, walk in your purpose for purpose because you were created with purpose on purpose. And allow the Spirit of God to cause you to grow in grace and not to who he is. So study your word. If you don't have this book, get this book. I'll say it again. Get this book, Break the Feet, Threefold, Demonic Quarter, Jezebel, After Leah and Delilah, How to Discern Those Lies of After Leah and Delilah, and Jezebel. And I guarantee, if you go back and listen to these lessons on my YouTube channel, all these lessons are on there that I've been teaching. For the last several months, the last several, actually years, five years, I've been teaching it on YouTube. But I pray you continue to be enriched in your spirit. You pray for me, I pray for you. We watch God change things. Amen. So anybody got any questions or comments, I thank you for all your comments on here tonight too. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. This is a really good lesson. I pray it blesses you. Well, until next week, the Lord said the same. We will resume again next week. Pick it up in chapter 7. I can't wait till we're done this book. I got another book I want to teach. It's, it's uh, God's Chasers. God's Chasers. It's a good book. The God Chasers. And I tell you, when you have a desire to chase after God, it blows your mind when you read the book. Because it's a really powerful book. God Chasers. Amen. Well, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May the Lord show you favor. And may the Lord give you peace. Until next week, you have a blessed night. Shalom.